But first, the effects of global warming are pushing one of our most iconic creatures into ever closer contact with people. It's a remarkable sight and one that's increasingly common, a polar bear high above the ice being carried far into the Arctic. Conservationists have to do this because the bears are increasingly moving into towns looking for food. As the sea ice disappears, so too does their hunting ground. And the evidence for that is dramatic. This pink line shows how the Arctic looked 20 years ago, a vast area covered in ice, used by the bears to rear their young and to hunt for food. But look at how it's all changed now, vanishing at an alarming rate. By September this year, this was all that was left. Well, for a special series of reports, our science editor Lawrence McGinty and a News at 10 film crew have travelled to the Canadian Arctic. Here's the second of Lawrence's reports, getting up close and personal to find the truth about polar bears. Amid the broken rubble of sea ice, a forlorn polar bear, unable to hunt seals, unable to go where it wants. A refugee almost in its own land. Stranded because the sea ice on the Hudson Bay is forming weeks later than it used to. The sea ice we're flying over is where the polar bears live. It's their niche in the world. It's their supermarket where they get meat from hunting seals. It's their highway for traveling around the Arctic region. It's their school where they teach cubs how to hunt. We come to meet Canada's foremost expert on polar bears, Andrew de Rocher. Hi, Andy. Lawrence McGinty, hi, pleased hey. to meet you. Hey, great to see you. <laughs> Andrew is a biology professor who's studied polar bear populations for 28 years. When it comes to the loss of sea ice, the, the major issue there is that you're cutting down the amount of time that the bears have to feed. Uh, we're just basically taking them away from their primary habitat where they have access to seals and we're forcing them on shore. In this area, we're saying when they come ashore, they really don't have much to eat. One reason our pilot, Lynn, is on watch with a shotgun ready to chase off any hungry bears. Two to three times as many bears are not feeding in the springtime, and this is the best time of year for feeding. Uh, so we really are concerned that this is just another one of these symptoms, and when you add them all together between drowning bears, we're seeing increased cannibalism in other areas. Um, many areas, we're also seeing more problem bears. When problem bears wander into Churchill, this is where they end up. They call it Bear Jail. This four-year-old male weighing 720 pounds has been here for 30 days. Now sedated, he's about to be airlifted back into the wild. Fifteen other bears are still back in jail as this male heads north for the open tundra. Some people say bears scavenging in towns shows how adaptable they are. They could escape the worst effects of warming by moving on to new food sources. An adult bear like this one needs a fat from 45 seals a year to survive. Even as the pilot gently lowers him to the ground 20 miles from town, they don't know whether in the months ahead he'll be able to catch enough seals out on the sea ice. Just the time of year that it is, I'm judging that he's not going to be back. But we have had ones that we've let go here and three days later they're back in the town of Churchill. They'll know if he does come back because every bear released is individually marked. There's a tattoo that would be in number eight, it's upside down, but X3232. The, the, the strength in these guys is absolutely phenomenal. You see them drag around a 400 uh, kilo seal, like it's like a big bearded seal, it's just like a rag doll and they can run with them, it's just amazing. Amazing they may be, but scientists like Andrew are pessimistic about the future. It's clear from the research that's been done by myself and colleagues around the world that uh, we're projecting that by the middle of this century, two-thirds of the polar bears will be gone from their, from their current populations. It's astonishing to be able to touch one of these magnificent, powerful beasts. But all the more sad to think that in 50 years or so, climate change means that they might not be here anymore. Some bears could survive in the colder high Arctic, but even then, perhaps not enough to continue the survival of the species. Well, Lawrence is on the tundra of Hudson Bay tonight. Lawrence, we see what's happened to bears who can't reach their usual feeding grounds, but there's better news tonight. 
Uh, there is indeed uh, bears. You've seen what happens to bears when they uh, wander into Churchill. But right now, uh, they're not wandering in town. They're wandering out here, where incidentally the wind is getting up just after uh, sunset. And that's because the sea ice is forming up very rapidly in the last week or so, and the bears are moving onto it uh, equally rapidly. Um, on the tundra here, uh, there are hardly any bears left. We did manage to film a mother uh, with its cub, maybe a, a yearling, earlier on, but those were the only bears uh, that we've seen all day. Because what you have to remember, Julie, is that these bears are very, very hungry. They haven't eaten anything uh, for five months. So as you can imagine, they're pretty keen to start hunting seals again. And the only place they can do that is out there on the sea ice, because they catch the seals um, as they come up for air through the ice. So the bears are on the move again, and so are we. We're going to travel uh, 30 miles east uh, to Cape uh, Churchill. We hope we'll catch up with them there. We're going by tundra buggy, so it's going to take us a day or two, but with a bit of luck, we'll soon be back with the bears. We we'll wish you a safe journey, Lawrence. Thank you very much. And we'll have more of Lawrence's investigation on tomorrow's program. Not everyone in the Arctic believes that the polar bear numbers are falling, so Lawrence has been to meet one community to hear its story. I've come to Arviat on the Hudson Bay to find out what the Inuit believe to be the truth about the polar bear. And if you can't wait till then, there's plenty more on our special website. Take a tour of the frozen north with a series of behind-the-scenes photographs. There's also a unique insight into Lawrence's journey in his blog and special interactive map. Just head to itv.com news for all of that.